today to do the next booktube sff babbles that i am super super excited about this week's topic is overlooked science fiction and if you want to join in with the booktube sff babbles and you don't really know what it is every week we get given a topic which is to do with science fiction fantasy or the booktube sff awards and each week we upload on thursday our response to whatever topic we have been given on the Goodreads group. I will link the Goodreads group below if you want to go and check it out. The topics are decided by Paul from A Common Touch of Fantasy, who is one of the judges for this year's Booktube SFF Award, alongside myself and many others. So go and check out the Goodreads group and if you have been making videos yourself, don't forget to go over there and link them so that everyone else can get involved and go and check out what you have been saying in your Babbles video. This week's topic, as I said, is overlooked science fiction. Now, I haven't read an awful lot of overlooked science fiction, I don't think. I've read mostly the new stuff, mostly the most popular stuff, because that's the sort of thing that a lot of people have recommended to me, and it's the easy entry point into science fiction for me. This week, instead of doing overlooked science fiction, what I decided I would do would be to show you guys some of the science fiction books that I already own that I'm excited to get to and talk a little bit about each one and then get you guys to let me know in the comments which one you think I should go for first and why out of the selection that I'm about to show you. So let's get right into it. The first one that I have to show you guys is The Moon is a Harsh Mistress, which is by Robert A. Heinlein. Now I believe that this is a fairly classic one. It says he is a great science fiction writer of the modern age, and I believe a lot of people have said that this is fantastic. I was actually gifted this from James for my birthday, James's channel I will link below. This one says on the back, Robert A. Heinlein was the most influential science fiction writer of his era, an influence so large that, as Samuel R. Delaney notes, modern critics attempting to wrestle with that influence find themselves dealing with an object rather like the sky or an ocean. So he sounds like a pretty big guy. He won the Hugo Award for Best Novel four times, a record that still stands. The Moon is a Harsh Mistress was the last of these four Hugo winning novels and it's widely considered his finest work, so I guess I'm starting in a good place. It's the tale of a revolution of the rebellion of the former lunar penal colony against the lunar authority that controls it from Earth. Oh good, I like, like good old wars between the moon and Earth. It is a tale of disparate people, a computer technician, a vigorous young female agitator, and an elderly academic who become the rebel movement's leaders. And it is the story of Mike, the supercomputer. <laughs> Mike the supercomputer, what a name, whose sentience is known only to this inner circle and who, for reasons of his own, is committed to the revolution's ultimate success. It sounds like it's going to be pretty fun, I must admit. I have been dying to read this for a long time and I was very happy when James bought it for me, but I still haven't got to it and I really, really want to. So do let me know your thoughts and I know that he's a great writer from many people's opinion. It's not too long, so I hope I can get to this one pretty soon. The next one I have on my list is one I meant to get to a while back but still haven't quite got to and that is John Scalzi's Old Man's War. This is the first one in his series. I believe that this is about a old man who gets enlisted into the army because he wants to be able to live again. But in order to do that, he has to join the army for a set amount of years. At 75 years old, he joins the army. And in order to join the army, because he wants a fresh start, they have to give him a new genetically modified body so that he is able to basically do the stuff that people in the army have to do, I guess. It says, upgrades won't keep Perry safe. Perry, what a name. Oh, the names of these science fiction characters are crack me up. He'll be fighting for his life on the front line as he defends humanity's colonies from hostile aliens. He'll pay the price for his choices and he'll discover the universe is even more dangerous than he imagined. Sounds like a good one. I know loads of people love John Scorsese and really rave about him as an entry point into science fiction. I haven't read much of his work. I've only read Lock In by him, which is a standalone. This one is a series or a beginning to a series, so I hope to like this one a bit more and continue on with the series. We shall see. Again, let me know in the comments if you think I should read this one first. The next one I have on my list of things that are science fiction that I want to get to soon is 2312 by Kim Stanley Robinson. 
Kim Stanley Robinson. I have read one or two things by. I've read a few of his short fiction in the few short fiction magazines that I'm subscribed to. It says on the back that nominated for the Hugo Nebula, BSFA and Arthur C. Clarke Awards. So it's been nominated for lots of awards. The year is 2312. Scientific and technological advances have opened gateways to an extraordinary future. Earth is no longer humanity's only home. New habitats have been created throughout the solar system, on moons, planets and in between. But in this year, 2312, a sequence of events will force humanity to confront its past, its present and its future. Now I have enjoyed what I've read so far of Kim Stanley Robinson's stuff. I hope that that is going to be a continuing theme and I particularly hope that I enjoy this one because apparently it's a bestseller and it's amazing and loads of people really enjoy his stuff and I'd like to read a longer novel length work by him and love it. So again, let me know if this is one you would really recommend me picking up soon. And then I also have two books which are back at my house, so I'm also going to mention them in case you guys would recommend them. The first of them is Consider Flebus, I think it's called, and this one is by Ian M. Banks. It's the first one in his culture series, which I think is quite a long one. It talks about a ever raging war that encompasses the entire galaxy, moons have been destroyed, planets have been destroyed, and havoc has been wreaked across the entire universe. It says that the Idrians are fighting for their faith and the culture has been fighting for its moral right to exist. Principles were at stake and there could be no surrender. Within the cosmic conflict, an individual crusade, deep within a fabled labyrinth, on a barren world, a planet of the dead, prescribed to mortals, lay a fugitive mind. Both the culture and the Idrians sought it. It was the fate of Horsa, the changer, and his motley crew of unpredictable mercenaries, human and machine, actually to find it, and with it, their own destruction. So I like a good mercenary story. I do hope that mercenaries in space is as good as mercenaries on Earth or a fantastical place of imaginings. I love mercenary stories, so I hope to love this one and I've seen lots of good reviews for this so do let me know if you think this is a series I should begin. And the final one that I own currently and am looking forward to getting to is The Mechanical by Ian Tregellis. Again I've heard good things about this from a, quite a few people that I like. Soon after the Dutch scientist and clockmaker Christian Huygens invents the very first clacker in the 17th century, the Netherlands built a whole mechanical army. It wasn't long before a legion of clockwork fusiliers marched on Westminster and the Netherlands and became the world's sole superpower. Three centuries later it still is. Only the French still fiercely defend their belief in universal human rights for all men, flesh and brass alike. After decades of warfare, the Dutch and the French have reached a tenuous ceasefire in a conflict that has ravaged North America. But one audacious clacker, Jax, can no longer bear the bonds of his slavery. He will make a bid for freedom. The consequences of his escape will shake the very foundations of the brasswork throne. Sounds good. Sounds exciting. Sounds like this guy has got something to prove and he's going to go and do it whether they like it or not. And I like that. I like a bit of personality and spark. So hopefully this one will also be fabulous. So those are all of the ones that I have to talk to you guys about today. Let me know out of the ones I've mentioned whether you would recommend starting with one or the other, which one appeals to you the most, which ones have you read and enjoyed, and if you have any other science fiction books that you think I would enjoy, leave them in the comments below, leave me some recommendations, I always love getting recommendations. Thank you all for watching, I will see you all very soon in another video. Bye! Me and you gonna have